The gem of the Arabian Peninsula, where modernity meets traditional culture, where thousands of meter high mountains meet the sea and the desert, where hospitality meets adventure, where the heart meets the soul. This spring, I went on an extraordinary journey. I went on a road trip through the Sultanate of Oman. I went to the rawest deserts, the highest mountains, and the most spectacular coastline I have seen in my life. In this foreign country, in the Middle East, I was not welcomed as a foreigner, but as a friend. A month and 2,500 kilometers of adventure Oman. We started our journey across the whole country from the city Salala. But before heading north to the more populated areas, we decided to first experience one of the least inhabited places of Oman, the Rub al Khali Desert, the so called Empty Quarters. An adventure far off from civilization, just the sandy, remote roads, the dunes, and us. Now we are where the big dunes are. It's absolutely amazing. There is nobody besides of us. Absolutely stunning ride. Oman is about the same size of Italy, but Italy has a population of roughly 62 million people. Oman only has 5 million citizens in total. The same amount of people that live in Australia's capital Sydney alone. The Rub al Khali Desert is the least inhabited place in Oman. Its name means translated the empty quarters. It is the largest sand desert in the world. Stretches from Oman to Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Yemen and covers an area of about 650,000 square kilometers, more than all of Netherlands, Belgium and France together. Some of the sand dunes are more than 250 meters high. The raw beauty of the desert immediately put a spell on us. During the days under the burning, unforgiving sun, at night under the stars and the moon, all by ourselves. Make sure to bring your camping gear. Because here is the good news. In Oman, you are allowed to put up your tent basically everywhere. Experience those wild places and a real state of solitude. There is not only the vast Rub al Khali desert in Oman, but many tourists choose to visit the more accessible Asharkia Sands desert instead, that was formerly known as Wahiba Sands and is situated about two hours from the capital, Muscat. The desert has always been the home of nomads, and today there are still a few Bedouin families left, who as well opened some camps to make their home, the desert, accessible for others. How are you? I'm good. Okay, let's go. In the township of al -Wazil, I luckily met Humid, who offered me a ride in his Toyota Land Cruiser, so I would not get stuck in the sand with my motorcycle. So who is the best driver? You or your brother? You. Me? No. 
Humvit comes from a Bedouin family, but he is not a nomad anymore. He studied engineering, but now works in the family business and lives in the desert. He explains to me how important family is in the Omani culture and why the desert is not a scary or harsh place to him, but his beautiful home. And even though he is used to these views on an everyday basis, I could still feel how amazed he is of the haunting beauty of Shakia Sands. From Zalala, we continued our ride north over the mountains in the state Dofar, always along the coast. And then, what to us felt like out of nowhere, because we didn't expect it, we all of a sudden were riding along the most stunning shoreline that we have ever seen in our lives. From the town Mirbad in the south to the city Dukum, it is about 600 kilometers on a winding coastal road. And there are no real hotels that you can find on Western online booking platforms. But you can always rely on the famous Omani hospitality. Locals will do everything to try to find an accommodation for you. So you surprisingly might end up in motel-style rooms or private houses. Omanis are heartwarmingly open and curious and treat everyone as a friend. Not only were we invited to people's homes several times, but as well got dates, Omani coffee, tea or cold drinks as a present from complete strangers. So nice to locals here at the petrol station, a local just bought us drinks. And wherever we went, we didn't feel like intruders but we were welcomed like long-missed friends. During our three-day journey from Zalala to Dukum, we didn't meet one single tourist and had all the little beautiful gems along the coast to ourselves. In the north of Oman, only a two-hour drive from the capital Muscat, there are majestic mountains rising to an altitude of 3,000 meters. And you can find some off-road riding that is a real challenge. This is steep and my wheels are just slipping. I'm braking, but it's so steep. You hear that? It's just going down. I mean, bike just slips, even though my brake is full on. Oh, this is scary.
But they are not only mountains. There are as well wadis, where there can be high water during the rainy season, and that look like green oases between the harsh rocks. Like everywhere in Oman, there are welcoming locals, living a simple and laid-back life. There are goats, actually, there are a lot of goats. And there are old villages and old forts. Some of these villages and old ruins are thousands of years old. It is impressive to experience this living history. People here value their old traditions and culture highly. Sometimes it makes you feel like a journey in time or a journey to a place where it's seemingly impossible to combine characteristics of a modern life and hundreds of year old traditions exist peacefully next to each other and with each other. It sometimes felt to me like this is the place on earth where peaceful Utopian reality really exists. The history is the future and the locals were always happy and welcoming to share it with us. There is no visit to Oman without getting in touch with the Omani religion that is a base and anchor of the Omani culture. The importance of Islam will be obvious to you as a traveler. At prayer times all the shops close, the streets all of a sudden empty. Omani people are amicable and accepting. They are too respectful and very likely will never comment on the way you dress. But it is important to respect the local culture. This of course applies to any country, but especially to those with such strong traditions like Oman. No matter if man or woman, try to wear long arm shirts and reserve your shorts or swimwear for the hotel beach. You can buy alcoholic drinks in all bigger hotels, but alcohol in general is forbidden, so you won't find any alcoholic beverages if you go to the less touristic places of the country. The traditional market culture in Oman is unique and has a very long history. Since the 3rd millennium BC, Oman has been a crossroad for traders and merchants. The Omanis were known for building and exporting very good ships and they traded with precious goods such as frankincense. If you want to get to know Oman's real market culture, you can visit the camel market in the city Sinau that is held each Thursday. Camels have always been valuable assets to Omanis. In the past, camels have been essential for transport and survival in the desert. And today, the animals are still highly valued. Nizwa has one of the biggest and oldest souks, which means market, in Oman. A must visit is the animal market that is held each Friday. It is full of energy. But if you look closely, you will understand its rhythm and structure. After our ride through the whole country, we headed to Muscat, the capital of Oman. By coincidence, we met Yusuf, who works in Muscat as a cab driver and tour guide. He not only showed us the most interesting sights of Muscat, but also took us to his hometown, Haramil, a small fishing village. So Yusuf just took us to his village, yeah, which is the name? It is my village named Haramel village. Haramel village. And it's a kind of fishing, old fishing village. Yes. And it's absolutely beautiful on the ocean. Yeah. Hello. You have life west? 
no need this. Like God yeah. gives you a still life, yeah. so you continue. Yeah. Even <laughs> you are in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> and there is time for everyone. Yeah. Against all of our expectations, Muscat turned out to have some of the most stunning surroundings you can imagine. But I realized that there has not been one single place in Oman that we visited that didn't exceed all of our expectations anyways. I spent nearly a month riding with my motorcycle through Oman, discovering its big and little secrets, its most remote and most well-known places. I realized that there is countless things to explore and that I could have easily stayed a few weeks more. But there is only one conclusion. Oman is a beautiful and unique destination. It is the perfect country to travel to. Not only because the nature is diverse, because Oman is one of the safest countries on earth, or because its culture is simple, traditional and extraordinary at the same time, but mostly because of its people, beautiful from inside out, and some of the most hospitable on the planet. When I left Oman after a month of traveling, I was not saying goodbye. I was saying, see you soon. Inshallah. Did you guys like this introduction and long summary to my new Oman series? If yes, leave a comment and give this video a thumbs up. Next week we will start to dig deeper into the secrets of Oman and I will take you to Rub al Khali, the biggest sand desert on earth and one of the most remote and raw places. Experience one of the most challenging days of traveling find out why I nearly lost my luggage, meet friendly camels and not so friendly Scorpios. Tune in next Thursday for the big kickoff to the new series Oman Overland.